to talk today is about your course. Your course. And your course is your change. God has set you on a course and a path. You've heard me talk about this all the time. We talked about your purpose and the purpose of time. We talked about your destiny and all of those things, how God sets you on that path. God knows your end. He started, he, God knew your end before your beginning. Amen. That's how he created the world. You've heard me talk about that all year. And it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's um, so wonderful that we talked about the kingdom all last year, 2015, the kingdom of God. And we covered it. It's amazing how God did that. And we covered the kingdom of God. So if you ever feel like you've forgotten anything about the kingdom, it's out there on the web. You just go to YouTube and you can listen to anything about the kingdom. And it's going to enlighten you and charge you to go forward. But it's so, it's, it's so magnificent the way he's done that. And now he's summed it all up with you and your course. Endure your change. What is your plan? For 2016. What is your destination for 2016? Have you wrote the vision down and made it plain for 2016? Where do you want to be next week? Where do you want to be in six months? Where? What are you telling God? Have you given God your flight plan that He might work with it? Habakkuk tells us this. Write the vision down, though it tarries. You write it down on tablets, though it tarry, it will surely, I say, somebody say surely, sure. come to pass. That's the word of God. Yes, Lord. So then file your flight plan, eagles. File your flight plan with God so when you take off, you leave the ground with victory. You have, you have the, the power. They know where you're going. Come on, somebody. So even if they have to detour, come on, you're still going to get there. Mm. Uh, don't, listen, that, that, don't the enemy, the, the prince of Persia might want to act up and try to do like he did with Daniel on your stuff. But guess what? It ain't going to prevent you from reaching your destination. Why? Because you filed your flight plan with God, and he's already leached and release the angels of the Lord to fight your battles. So you're going to get to that destination. Somebody. File your flight plan then before you leave the ground. And then on top of that, you must, you must constantly communicate your plan mm, to the tower. See, I mentioned this last week, but somebody didn't really get it. Constantly communicate Constantly communicate your plan to the tower. Oh, somebody, just because you write your plan down and you know you're on your way, you've got it charted out, it's all good. Uh, the tower has it. They, but guess what? If you leave it dormant and don't communicate, mm, you don't say, well, listen, wait a minute. Uh, I'm having trouble over here. My, uh, oh, somebody, my engine just comes out, oh, Lord. I need your help. Send the angels of the Lord, amen. Uh, I, well, wait a minute, Lord. The devil just got in front of me. Uh, they sent a trickster and beguiled me, and I'm off my course somewhere. But could you help me out of this particular situation? Oh, wait a minute, Lord. My finances got a little low. I'm on my way, though. You know I'm on my way. But my finances got a little messed up, Lord. But I need to communicate that to you so you can fix it and drop what you need in my bank account so God I can stay on that course to you all you know you have my plan but see where we mess up with our flight plan we don't communicate to the tower just think if you don't communicate to God I, I guess just think if you're not telling him every situation and just think if you just not come into church and, and connecting with him and letting him know that you are involved with him because God loves to communicate somebody he loves relationships he loves communion come on somebody how do you why do you think he put all this stuff in here if he didn't want you to participate mm. so you must have a constant relationship. You must continue whether you feel like it or not. Mm. That's where it gets a little hazy. 
because it don't feel good, and, and yet he wants me to talk to him. Well, sometimes when it don't feel good, I say, well, Lord, it's on you. Oh, somebody. Uh, when it don't feel good, I say, Lord, I don't know, but thy knoweth. Come on, somebody. Hey, come on, you got to be like, a, you, and when he told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, will these bones, oh, somebody, <laughs> will, these, will, they, will they grow sinew? I, I think that, Lord, I don't know, but thy knoweth. I don't know where I'm going to wind up, Lord. You know my course. You know my end. Right now, you told me I'm on it, but I need your help. Amen. David said, God is my refuge. Amen. My shield, my buckler, and my fortress. Therefore, he will take care of you. So then you must continue to communicate your plan to the top. And here's the big one. Here's the one. And when you get communication to the tower, when the tower communicates back to you, Brother Max, you must follow the instructions of the tower. <laughs> because why? You can't see. You, you, you don't know what's around you. You, you. you need to keep your eyes in front of you. You need to keep your eyes on the hill uh, from the hill which cometh my help. Uh, you need to keep your eyes uh, on the path of righteousness. You need to stay, hallelujah. Don't look to the left nor to the right, but look at them instruments, amen, and communicate and stay on course. Uh, why? Because you can't see what's behind you. You can't even see what's on the side of you. You're in the air. You can't see on the right or left. The only place you can see, and sometimes you can't even see in front of you. If you ever been in a plane in a cockpit, you'll know some, the clouds sometimes are so thick they can't even see. They have to rely on what the tower tells them. Uh, you have to rely on what they communicate to you. Uh, see, sometimes the instrument somebody won't even work. Oh, man. Hallelujah. I, I've seen and since I've been on planes where the instruments didn't work. Come on, somebody. Or when the wheels didn't want to let down. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody gonna get this with me. See, you need to stay with God. You need to communicate your flight plan. It's all about God. It's all about the tower. Because, see, you don't know what's around you. <laughs> A plane in the air, all you see is clouds, thick clouds. Sometimes storms, they say, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to climb another 10,000 feet to get over top of the storm that's in front of us. And then all of a sudden, you're on there, and then all of a sudden you see these hail and snow flurries on your window. And, and then you look on, the, and look on the wing, and there's ice on the wing, and you say, oh, Lord, I know it's cold out there. You have no clue what's going on. You, you're sitting in your seat. Hey Amen. But you filed your flight plan. Why? Wow, you got your ticket. You trust in God to get you there. You're communicating with the tower. You're the pilot. Because, see, there could be birds. Some planes have crashed because they've run into a school of birds. Some planes have crashed because they've run into mountains. Some planes have crashed because the instruments didn't work. Some planes have run into other planes that they did not see. You don't know what's... And some planes had to land because of bad weather. And some planes have crashed because they had some evil folks on them. Some devils took them right to death. Hallelujah. Y'all done read the news when the boy just went crazy and drove him right into the sea. It took him months to find the plane, even piece of it, and I still don't think they got it all. And right after that, somebody else did the same thing. So there's terrorists on some planes. So see, there's all kinds of things that could happen on your course, on your flight course. But you must constantly soar like an eagle. Find your plan with God. Communicate your plan, your course with God so that he can protect you from all of these things. Because see, he sees all, knows all. And he's going to take you to your destination. And when you get there safe, you'll say, oh God, without you, I'm nothing. See, so your question this year is not just 
that old crazy stuff we do, the world does, about a resolution. What you need, the question is, is what do you need to change? What do you need to change to make your course better? What do you need to change? And then, on top of that, the next question is, how you want to change it? What do you need to change? And how do you want to change it? Oh, somebody. See, you have to have what? A flight plan. You have to have a course. And then, you, how do you plan to get there? Also, I need to write this, some of this down because you're going to need this later. So then, what do you need to change? What, what, what? It's, it's, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Where am I lacking, Father? I need you to change me. I, I'm willing that I want to change. How, oh God, do you need me to change? How? Do I need to change? Oh, man. Yes. How do you want to change? Oh, but here's, here, here's the one that, that, that I really like. What do you want to change from? Mm. What do you want to change from? You know, some changes, I love this, you know, and America is, is good for this. It says, you know, they're all, you know, you hear about change. People talk about change. Yes, change is good. But then, what are you changing to? <laughs> I, I know some people, I, I, we, we know some homosexual people today. They want us to change. But then what are they changing to? And what did they change from? So you need to know what you change and from. What we say in the, in, in the PM world, it's called a gap analysis. We know what we started with, and we also know what we're going to end up with. So what are we changing from? And what were we changing to? That's what you need to be asking yourself. Who am I, Lord, to you today? And what do I need to be tomorrow? Those are good questions. Forget about the resolution stuff. Focus on your flight course as it takes you to the next level. Hallelujah. See, the key is, the key is God's kingdom. Yeah. I don't know I couldn't get through this without speaking about the kingdom of God. God's kingdom concept is for impacting the world. His kingdom concept is to impact the world. And how does he do this? Let's go to some texts. Because we need some scriptures to back up what I'm saying. Y'all been holding your Bibles and said, wow, that's good stuff, but I ain't hearing no scriptures. So let's see some scriptures. Go to, go, to, go to John 12. Let's look at this. And watch this. John 12, verse 47. Now, God's kingdom concept is for impacting, his concept for impacting the world is this. Jesus. Notice this. God's kingdom concept for impacting the world is Jesus. Amen. That's what it is. Jesus, and because Jesus believed that the world needed to change. Oh, man. <laughs> so God's kingdom concept for impacting the world is Jesus. Because Jesus understood what a real change and a true change is. Notice, he answered all of these questions that I just mentioned. Jesus believed that the world needed to change, not the earth. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. Jesus believed that the world, somebody say world, world. needed to change and not the earth. The world 
See, not the earth, but the world. And he had a clear purpose and destiny for change. He had a clear purpose and destiny to change. That's worth repeating again. Jesus believed that the world needed to change, not the earth. Because he believed that the world, he had a clear purpose and destiny for to change it. Look at, look at John 12 and 47. John 12 and 47. So here's Jesus. So he answered all these questions that I mentioned. He had a clear purpose and destiny to change. And that's what you have to have. And we talked about purpose last week or the week before. And we talked about destiny. Now we're talking about your course and your change. Look at Jesus. He had a clear purpose and destiny to change the world, not the earth. John 12 and 47 says this, And if any man hears my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came, notice what he came, I came not to judge the world, but to do what? Save it. Notice, he came to do what? Save the world. He didn't say earth. Hmm. Interesting. Look at Mark 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. Hallelujah. So he said his purpose, his destiny, was to change the world. And how was he going to do that? He was going to save it. He was going to save the world, not the earth. Mark 16 and 15 says this. Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That was his destiny. That was his purpose. That was how he was going to change the world. That's how he did it. That's how he wanted to change it. That's what he changed because the world, as you know, was not saved. It was not saved. It was destined for destruction before Jesus came. He tells us that in the word of God. So Mark 15, chapter 16 says, and he said unto them, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Saved. The word saved is the same meaning as salvaged. In other words, if I save you from destruction, that I, I'm doing nothing but salvaging you. Anybody ever been to the junkyard and you bought something? All you did was save that piece of junk from being destroyed. <laughs> what, 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 what does the prophets and the teachers and the preachers and, and, and they go to God and say, God, I'm wretched. Jacob told God, God, I'm small. God told Jacob, what well, you less than an earthworm. Oh, man. <laughs> and when I thought about that particular statement, he's right. Because what crawls up on and in the earth? Earthworms. Where are we from? The dust of the earth. So he was a good stand-up. So Jesus came to salvage us. That was his destiny and purpose for change. That's how he, that's how he made the difference, remember? Gap analysis, what it is and what it's to come, what it should be when you finish with it. And notice when he came, he made the change, he saved us, his purpose was to change us. Change and save the world. And when it was done, he said what? It's finished. Oh, man. This is good stuff. So the word save means salvage, to put back to its original state. <laughs> so in other words, 
When Adam came, we had a legal right inheritance. We were flowing, amen, like true princes and kings, queens and, and priests and priestesses. But we lost all of that. And we came like John. We was needed saving. So Jesus says, I'm going to go and salvage that Lord which was lost. So he says, again, the word save means salvage, to put back to its original state, whereas the word create means to make something new. God created the earth. He created it in the book of Genesis. He created God, God, God created the earth. Jesus came to save the world. Oh man, watch this, it gets better. So God created the earth, Jesus came to save the world because the earth did and does not need to be saved. The earth does not need to be saved, but the world, See, God had already did a perfect work because when he created the earth and everything thereof in six days, he says, it is good. Oh, somebody. And it is good when God is perfect. The earth don't care about what we're doing right now because the earth can turn around at any moment and regenerate itself and wipe all of us out. Because that's why it's totally boiling and baking and cooking. Uh, you look at the volcanoes. You ever seen one? It's baking, boiling. It, it regenerates and cooks anything. You, and, the, and it comes up and it creates. It just constantly, the earth is constantly creating new earth. Because it knows that the man on earth is destroying it. But God says, don't worry about it. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt my earth. Destroying the world. So then, we know now, we understand a little bit between the difference between the world and the earth. God created the earth and Jesus came to save the world. Notice, he had to do this. Because when Adam was here, the world systems were created by man. The earth was fine. God didn't have no problem with the earth. He had a problem with man. He had a problem with the world and the devil. Because why? We know devil is what? The prince of the world. So his problem then is with the prince and man. Because they represent the world. But the earth is perfect. It's good. Watch this, because some of you are saying, oh, Lord Jesus. God created the earth, and Jesus came to save the world because the earth did and does not need saving the earth because it is good and perfect, the earth. And where did we come from? The earth. We were, the earth was here before we were. It was perfect. God created us from the earth and then put us on top of it, the way we so then that boy created the world. Look at, look at this. Now watch this. Let me tell you why the, why the earth doesn't need any fixing. Look at this particular scripture. Look at this particular scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm sorry. For, yeah, chapter 10, verse 26. Just one, it's a one-line scripture. And it backs up exactly what I've said about the, about the earth and God's creation of it. This is... This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. It says this, for the earth is the Lord. Oh my God, that sums it up. We don't own it. It's the Lord. The earth is the Lord. Now that's pretty clear. He says, watch this though, it gets better. He says, for the earth is the Lord and the fullness, the, full, the fullness means everything about it and everything that's attached to it or in it. The fullness, amen, hallelujah, is his. 
The earth belongs to God. It's not ours, see? That's why when we die, we got to leave here. Mm. Uh, uh, that's why we don't own nothing. That's why they tell you, man, uh, whatever you got when you die, it ain't yours. You, you came naked, you're going to leave naked. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you ain't going to have nothing. You came in there with nothing, and you're leaving with nothing. Because it wasn't yours to begin with. The earth, for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. That's what the earth is. That's why God owns it. That's why we don't. But the world, on the other hand, is a different story. God knew the world was going to mess up. So then he says, well, Jesus, I've got the world. I've, no, I'm sorry. Jesus, I've got the earth. It's covered. They can't do anything. I own that. And the fullness thereof, it belongs to me. It's mine, says the Lord. But guess what? I gave free will to man. Now you go save them for their of the world. And you say, well, Pastor, what is the world? You need to remember there are two worlds on the earth. There are two worlds on the earth. These two worlds... The one is the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, which I've been talking about all of 2015. That's one world. That's the one I've been making you affluent in. And that's the one I've been praying and begging that you gravitate to. The second world is the kingdom of darkness. And that world is represented by the devil, Satan. God gave it to me. God gave it to him. Satan was created just like we were. God gave him the world systems. He even told Jesus. He said, Jesus, all this is mine to give to you if you bow down and worship him. Jesus said, son, wait a minute. I wrote it all. <laughs> what are you telling me for? I wrote the book. <laughs> you can't tell me. You can't offer me nothing. But what you need to understand, I shall worship the Lord and he alone shall I serve. <laughs> now be gone, he says. That's how we need to be talking to the enemy, saints of God. Get thee behind me, Satan, for my destiny, my course, the Lord has in his hand. I know my hand is good. It's already better. So he says, we understand now that there are two worlds. We know the devil is our adversary. And he is what we call, he gives us adversity. He's an adversary and he's always adverse against us. He's an adversary. He's always adverse against us. But the good news, saints, whatever he is adverse to is proof that it belongs to you. Somebody didn't get that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, let me say that again. Anything that the devil is adverse to, in other words, it's against. Anything that the devil is against, it's proof that it belongs to you. In other words, he wants to tell you that you can't have or do or be, and therefore it is yours because it was promised. And the reason he's adverse to you and the reason he's against you because he knows your end. He knows your destination is toward the end where God has laid it out for you. In other words, he really doesn't know your end. The devil only knows your past. He doesn't know your future. He only, he only buffers you with your past. Let me give you an example because some of you are like, okay, maybe that does make sense. Every time something happens to you, where does your mind go? To the past. Oh, I fell there, I fell again. Oh, it's happening all over again. All oh, the situations will never change. The devil wants to hear all that because you're, you're speaking it. You're not speaking about your end and the destination that God has you on the course. 
Uh, you're, you're even, and some of you have been prophesied to receive great things, and, 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 and when, when, then when you get a little advers adversity, when, when I just got through saying he's adverse, he's against everything that's good to you, so then that's proof that you're supposed to have it. That's proof that it's yours. Hallelujah. See, you need to understand that if you wasn't doing a good work for God, if you wasn't pressing toward the mark, toward your course, toward your end, toward your destination, the enemy wouldn't have no time for you. He said, well, dog, I ain't got to worry about them because they ain't doing nothing. No way. Let me go with somebody get somebody who's doing something or trying to do something or believe in God, having faith. So if you didn't have adversity, then the enemy wouldn't be buffering you. But because you have that adversity from the devil, that's proof that you're supposed to have what God has for you. But you can't give up, as I always say, and can't quit. Now let me tell you about these systems in the world. So then you need to understand again that your healing, your health, your new job, your new business, and your relationship is all based on you having those things. And the enemy is buffering you. He's being adverse. He's being against you to have those things. How does he do that? He do that through the world systems. He does that through the kingdom of the world. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. How is that so? Some of us need to understand the difference between the world and the earth again. And why Jesus came to salvage, to save the world. Because he was trying to save us from the world systems. And you say, well, what is the world systems? See, the earth means terror, which is the Jewish word, which means the physical planet. And I already gave you the scripture to back up the fact that the physical planet belongs to God in the fullness thereof. And then, but the world means cosmos, which is the governing, the governing systems. The governing systems. What are the governing systems? Watch this. Now, I'm going to go right to your stuff. What is the governing system? The governing system is the power of authority, controlling systems, systems of control, banking, financing, health care. Should I go on stock market? Anything, uh, 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 insurance. All these are worldly systems. And what does the devil do in these systems? He put evil people in control. Let me help you even more. A lot of folks, the enemy knows how to kill you. A lot of folks, because they can't afford health care, come on somebody, they die. Because they can't, the devil wants to kill you. And that's how he does it. And a lot of folks can't, they can't go to the bank. Why? Because the finance company say you got to have money in the bank before he can give you money. Now, that's the world system. That ain't how it's supposed to work. I was watching a documentary uh, just the other day on Discovery about the Aztec people and how they lived. Uh, I don't know what they were worshiping at the time, but they had a governing system. And their system allowed didn't, didn't allow nobody to go hungry, didn't allow nobody to go without insurance. It was a total socialist economy where everybody had the same, no matter who you were. And nobody, nobody suffered. Everybody, they had a happy, happy ethnic group. They had a happy economy. But then when the Spaniards came and took over and, 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 and took over the country and killed them and put in their government, then people were starving. People were going hungry. People were dying. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then it's not it's not the, 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 the systems uh, or the financial systems or the healthcare system that is, that is evil. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not corrupt. It's the people that the enemy is using to corrupt them. Because those are world systems and the devil knows how to use the 
those people. That's what the health care and church started. That's why what? Because folks was literally, literally, I say, dying. Because no one could afford health care. But Jesus came and says, wait a minute. I'm coming to level that playing field. I'm coming to save you. I'm coming to salvage you, to keep you from dying, to put money and prosperity in your pocket so that your needs will be met. He says, I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to supply all your needs according to all my riches and glory, said the Lord. Notice Jesus came with the kingdom of heaven to provide for you because he knew that the world system would not do anything for you but cause you depression and hardship. That's why Jesus came with a plan and a purpose and a destination to save the world. I asked the question. I says, God, okay. You know, I, I, and I look and I see stuff and I watch people. I, I, you know, I watch the news sometimes for the most part, and then I turn it off. And what happens is, this is what I see. I see people sometimes, including celebrities or whatever, I see people playing with God. I see them one minute, you know, whatever it is they do and all that, the next minute you read about them on a murder case about they had domestic disputes or they was beat down or they was robbing or, or they were in, in some other horrific crime and, and all of that stuff or they, you know, or you never, you don't hear from them anymore. And they're sitting on TV talking about this and that or and there's some of our religious leaders as well. And I see that. And I'm going, okay, God, then you have a sense of humor, but God doesn't play. Now, Jesus' kingdom, notice his kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. You need to get this. And we need to understand because we've been taught. We've been taught about the kingdom of heaven, and that's what we need to remain. Don't go back out there in the world systems thinking that they're going to bless you. They hate you. The devil is going to turn around and beat you down doubly because you, you came to God. He's going to feel like you, you divorced him, but then you came back. So you're going to be worse than the bad women syndrome. He's going to beat you down. You need to stick with God. You have to understand. God has to, wait a minute. God has to test you. First of all, he has to have confidence that you're going to stick and stack. I mean, come on, somebody. If I loaned you some money, I got to know before you come back and ask me for some more money, I got to see your credit history. I got to make sure you're going to pay me back. And now, what generally happens in that situation, you know, I, I loan people some monies, and, you know, they run when they see me, which lets me know that they're not a friend. They never intended to pay me back. So then, guess what? They're not part of my system. They're not flowing in the kingdom. Because why? They're lying and cheating. You cannot do that with God. You're either in or you're out. He said you're either on my side or on the enemy's side. He said if you're in the middle, I'm going to spew you out. So I'm saying you understand you have a clear vision of what a destination and a change is. You understand that now. There shouldn't be any question in your mind going to 2016. You know what the world system is. You know who owns the earth. You done gained a whole lot of knowledge, man. You ought to be ready for 2016. Oh, man. So you understand these systems. You know, the health care, Obamacare, all that, that's just another worldly system. But it was created to fix one problem, to stop some people from dying. But it ain't got everybody. A lot of people still poor, can't afford it. It's still too high for a lot of folks. But nevertheless, that's why, saints, and I'm going to tell you something. 
before there was Obamacare, there was Jesus care. A lot of y'all know, oh, somebody, oh, somebody on a wave hand. A lot of y'all know you wouldn't be here today <laughs> if it wasn't for Jesus because guess what? You couldn't afford no insurance. And you had to trust God for your healing. And, and you had to trust God for your financing. You had to trust God for your welfare. You had to believe God. You had to trust Jesus that he was going to salvage your situation, save you, and bring you into his Father's kingdom where there is many mansions. There is no lack. There is no wants. Amen. Come on. He's your shepherd. Yes, Lord. Stick with Jesus. Yes. And finally, saints, I want to close back to where we were before as we go into 2016. Go back to me, and we was here last week, but I, it's worth repeating. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. 1 John 5. And 1 John 5 says, Five and, 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 and five. First John chapter five, verse five. And I asked this question last week and it's worth repeating because you need to know who you're going to serve. Faith in the Son of God. That's where your faith should be. Faith in God. Not in man. Faith in the Son of God. Faith in the Son of God. But I have a question for you again. Who is he that overcome the world? Who is he that overcame the world? We have to follow his lead, saints of God. Jesus overcame every temptation, every, every avenue, every sickness, every disease, every pain, every suffering. He overcame it all. And what he's saying is, who is he then that overcame the world? But he that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. In other words, he is, hallelujah, the Savior. I like the word that the fact that it became salvage because y'all, we was we were wretched. <laughs> we're wretched creatures. I mean, I don't think none of you can count the, the, the on your I, I don't think none of you can count, including me. But on your hands and fingers and your toes, <laughs> the, the numbers of sins and all the mess that we've done. Sometimes when I think about it, I cry because I hate it. I messed up part of my life doing it. Are you hearing me? It was a waste of my time. It's a waste. Those are years I wish I could have took back and just gave it all to God. Could not trust a man on any avenue. But I can. And neither can you. But now, he says, we are a new creature. Every day, he has forgiven us of our sins. But I need you, dear ones, to forgive yourself. Before you leave here today, I don't want you taking that stuff with you. I want you to forgive it and let it go. Don't you take nothing with you. Your past, I don't care what it was, let it go today. It's gone. It's the past. Let it go. I don't care what kind of hurt it was. I don't care what it was. Let it go. Because you can't get to your future dwelling in the past. If you want to think about the past, Think about Lot's wife. She didn't want to let go of the past. And she became the past. That's why she remained. She wasn't able to go forward. Because she was too busy looking back at the past. So then he says, this is he, verse 6, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. Somebody say unity. That's where we're going, saints. That's where we're headed. That's where we are going to be. 
No more hanging out in this worldly system stuff when we need to trust the body of Christ. We need to pray for one another. We need to become unified in the body of Christ. I'm telling you because I only reason God had me to explain to you about the world and the world systems and what they have done to you. They have broken you down to literally nothing. And then you had to come to God because there was no place else. The world never wanted you in the first place. And nevertheless, God says, you're still mine. He came for all of us. But then how many know of him? How many have accepted him? And if you have accepted him, your prayers should be, Lord, bless the believers and the saints of God. Let them magnify the Lord with me. Bless your people, Lord. Bless the church. That's where your prayer should be. That's how you should be praying because God, God, dear ones, is working through the church. I'm telling you. That's where he's going to be blessing you. And 2016, through the saints of God, through the church. Some of you already understand that. Because you tried the world and the world didn't give you nothing but a hard time. But now he's saying unity in the body of Christ. And anybody that plays a game with the church are going to suffer the consequences of the Almighty God. I'm telling you, that's what the Lord has spoke to me. This is why unity is so key. Because in the past, our prayers, and we've unified with the world, and the world has done us in. And now, God says, now you will believe me. Now you will come to me and be part of the body of Christ in unity. That's why he broke it down last week to show it to you. So then Ephesians 4 says, Unity and the maturity in the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, verse 3. You don't have to go there because we're done. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the body of Christ. Through the peace, the bonds of peace. And Jesus, holy in mighty name. Amen.